What is up everyone and welcome back to another Skywatch update. It has been just over two months since the last official Skywatch and I'm happy to say that the team is back and has been hard at work on the next wave of additional content, which ranges from everything in the development of the game's lost people to a strange levitation artifact. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So in the most recent build, the devs start off with a focus on a bunch of quality of life additions, as well as some very cool concept art that gives you an idea of the direction that the devs are going with the internal ship stylization. But to start off, they give us a taste of their newest development, the Gaul Script font, which is something the team's UX designer Ellen has been working on. Now, in case you guys remember, the Gaul language script was something that was made as a work in progress edition. And in this development, which was based off of a mixture of Japanese kanji and Egyptian hieroglyphs, the language is essentially how the Gaul people communicated through writing. And this very awesome looking image here, the devs have given us a secret message in the Gaul script writing, which if taken a little bit of time to decipher and translate, says, hello, this is my Skywatch. Thank you, Emma, for making this super cool language. This font was really fun to make. Which, of course, gives credit to Gemma, who helped make this awesome language for the team to use in the UX development. And in my opinion, I think this was a really smart way to go. With making an actual translatable font, it will make the job of integrating any kind of civilization-related lore into the game become a more simple task, as well as make for some crazy-looking artistic detail in both the team's designs of different menus of the game, as well as possibly creating different assets that contain hidden messages. And if I'm going to be completely honest, I personally would love to have this font myself as being able to write stories in this language seems like so much fun to do. And it would definitely make for some awesome pictures and visual designs as well. So I truly hope the devs eventually decide to one day make this font accessible to the public because man, the style and overall look is just, it's so cool. The next set of content the devs provide here in relation to this is more UX elements that Ellen has been working on. And in these different photos here, we can see the additions of formatting to different sections of the building menu, which show off a variety of different categories, including storage, lights, structural, furniture and the panels and deck, which have many placeholder item names, but have their own additional sections for the name and category level and description of those items as well. And even the associated Gaul script looking pretty cool as a nice little subtext to all the different names on the menu interface. And second to that, we also get to see the shipyard powered crafting menu, which contains different categories such as the core, which unfortunately I can't go into more depth for, the engines, wings, sails, and weapons, which include two total, that being the cannons and machine gun categories. And lastly for this, they have one more image showing off the UX format in a different language, which thinking back from previous previous updates is likely just to represent how the different naming will look like in a variety of other languages than English so that anyone of any background will be able to eventually play and understand the game. So all in all, they've done a pretty good job at furthering the menus development with my only real concern at this stage in terms of the language translation itself is that as far as I can tell with only the symbol table, the devs have previously shown in the past updates, the Gaul symbols themselves directly translate to the English alphabet. So if someone else who say spoke Italian, which only has like 21 letters in their alphabet wanted to find out what the Gaul message actually said, they would have to convert to English first, then to their respective language with whatever method is on hand, and I could only imagine that could be a challenge to overcome when developing the actual translations for the game itself, and in the translation into their created Gaul language as well. But when it comes to that, I believe only time will tell at this point. The next category moving on to is Sky Travel. The images shown next demonstrate the team's work in progress damage system, which shows how the different damage decals are applied, where they start by showing off the different variations of cannons as well as the different visual points that have specific hull placement and marks put onto the model itself, which helps gives a clearer look at how their system identifies the changing look of the asset as it experiences different degrees of damage which is important for a number of reasons, as there will be many different kinds of threats that you'll come across in Lost Skies, so having an effective way to represent those different degrees of damage on parts of your ship 
both make sense logically and in a visual representation standpoint will also give the player a larger indicator of when repairs may need to be made and second to that they even give a small little gif that plays a loop showing how some of the little damage visuals change where you can see a lot more of the scuffed and blackened scratches starting to form on both the cannon and even the propeller engine as well the devs also go on to say that another benefit of creating this system is that it can be applied to all components where they give us an example of the damage effects on a workbench which while it looks very cool and high tech and has a bunch of interesting detail, visually has a lot more scuffed up markings and slightly rusted out brown patches around the actual model itself. They also go on to show us a close up of a pretty damaged propeller engine that was made up of metal scraps and wood, which with the model's intricate design adds a lot more realism to the look and even an image of a damaged figurehead, which as you will see again in a little bit here, is used generally as an asset to the front of your ship itself. And then finally, among the damaged assets, we do have an example of a sail, which has a bunch of torn up and ripped holes, as well as some of those slightly rusted metal patches we've seen previously. Now they do state here that the sail's damage system needs more touching up to do, as the fabric needs to actually tear when damaged, but even as a temporary placeholder for the simple sale, it appears as though they have a great start. Now, one of the important aspects when designing different damaged assets is creating the actual VFX that are made when those assets experience damage in that instant. So they next go on to show a small video of a from a man named Tom who shows off some of the animated impact VFX that could be applied for damage. And in this video, he starts by showing off some of the variable changes he can make with different types of debris, where in the case of damaging wood-based engines, he shows off that he's able to increase the amount of, say, wooden pieces that are generated for a given damage animation, as well as the speed of that debris, and among many other variable changes, can affect the amount of sparks, dust particle effects, and of course the type of material that the VFX animation are being made for. In addition to the effects that they can change around, they even have a controllable vector system, which allows you to build a system of making the damage animations show up on different parts of an asset depending on where the damage is actually coming from. Now, while having this system and so much control over just the damage animations alone, I imagine it'll be very important they go through testing out many of the different styles and changes for these assets, as you want the animation to look good, but at the same time consider how prominent the animation should be. In other words, you don't want to go overkill with the wooden particle effects, for example, if the amount of damage and type of damage is weaker. So I think it'll likely be quite the process of testing out these different parts in different scenarios. And even in cases where different sections of an engine will be made of wood and metal, depending on what direction the damage is coming from, you might want to see certain kind of damage effects on the same individual part that are respective to the material of the piece of that part. But again, from here, only time will kind of tell how this all develops. Now onto the fun stuff. First up, we have some stunning art from the team's artist, Jonathan Betts, who made this stuff as conceptual ship interior designs, where you can see a ton of beautiful art decoration on the walls and a variety of plant decoration, either for growing useful plant crops for a variety of foods or just for decoration as a whole. And the overall look is very futuristic-y, I guess I kind of say, and it doesn't really match anything that I can kind of compare it to game-wise. And even among the very cool looking furniture, lighting, and high tech walls, we have some kind of levitating crystal things in the back, which you might see, which could be kind of part of some kind of terminal device that the player may use for all we know. Uh, the next one they show us is another internal ship room, but with a more open floor concept, using a bunch of like open windows and doorways, balcony areas, and wall and floor carpeting with very like geometric designs, I'd say. And has a very cool stove slash oven for cooking meals. And of course, that's not even mentioning the trophy head of the Nautilus, or Naughty Boy, as he's come to be known as, with his little mouth tentacles frayed out, which is a large shrimp-like insectoid creature that is strangely very cute. Next up, the devs gave us a bunch of new assets, where they say one of their 3D artists, John Warner, has been taking these concepts we've seen in previous art and modeling some of them, as you can see in this image. Where you can see models made for the fur rugs, the 
futuristic ceiling lights, what looks like new wall panel lights, and even the baby Nautilus, which we haven't seen since Skywatch 11, where the team had only shared their initial concept art, both having some basic models and an image of it being turned into a shish kebab, which I have mixed feelings about, but either way, the team agreed that the baby Nautilus was too cute to not put in the game, so it appears they have made a full-blown model for him and put him into this very strange jar, which looks like it could be used for some kind of decoration on your ship. In addition to this, we get a picture of cool cave plants and their plant boxes that seem to have mounts on the side of them as well and even a gray box model for the staircase and some small chairs, which references some previous concept art that we've seen. We also get an image of the piping gray box, and right after this image, we also get to see a model fully made out for the stove slash campfire cooker we just saw moments before, where they made a bunch of different designs and then show the flushed out color models for the stairs and wall piping and cables which among other things makes me very curious about whether the piping will just be aesthetical or if it will have some kind of functional implementation into actually like powering things like engines and possibly other weapons that we may use. But as of now, no information is provided in that regard. They also provide an image of the stove and utensils shown in the previous concept pieces where you can see they made a bunch of nice pots and pans that are very, very close to the actual concept art and what looks like some kind of cracked lava rocky material for the stove's wood. And it seems like this could also be used on different kind of rock textures as well. And they also have another fully fleshed out stove design, which is essentially identical again to the concept art, where you can see all of the geometric design aspects with a nicely lit fire in the front of it just to finish it off. And lastly, from the 3D artist are some work in progress models of a different set of wall textures that seem to be gray boxes, but with a little bit of coloration, which has a lot of indented material put into the different portions of the wall itself which I imagine will have a wider variety of orientation options. And again, the previous made models, this paneling was pretty much made extremely accurate to the conceptual art, which just looks fantastic. Now, moving away from the direct modeling side of things, we do have more interesting concept art that has yet to be finalized. First, we start off with some considerations of the bed designs made by Jonathan, all of which look very interesting, with most of them following the similar high-tech style that we've seen so far. My favorite of which I'd say is probably number four or number two. I think they have a nice style but aren't too much overkill on the kind of futuristic look. And we also get to see some pillar design concepts where they present a handful of varieties for different ways to create useful space out of the actual pillars themselves. Where you have some side extruding platforms to store other small objects, some with a handful of surrounding box plants that are mounted, and some that simply just use a different kind of archway that accentuates the actual pillar itself. The last thing the devs give in terms of concept art is something called the Atlas Lifter, which only comes with the description of a device that makes objects weightless. And while no further information is provided for this, it opens up a bunch of possibilities as to what this could be used for. Whether it's for your ship itself or possibly a discovered item for crafting is not really clear at all. But I'd have a hard time thinking about what this mechanic type thing could actually offer. And initially when I saw this, I couldn't help but imagine this being used on like an enemy or some kind of animal and just being able to like sneak up on like a deer and just slap this atlas lifter on his back and watch him float away uncontrollably. I can kind of just see that as prime opportunity for shenanigans, but they specify objects in this description, which I think implies non-living, sadly. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Next we get to see how these ships are shaping up in the latest build where someone named Claudia completed an art pass on the ship's material textures where among other things in this photo, you can see a previous figurehead on the front part of the ship and more material texture on the brown colored paneling and sheet metal looking sides, which as it seems, they have made very good progress on. They also shared a video clip with us that shows the progress that the team has made in their ship designer, specifically referencing the network changes in the editor, where the left side is an example of a person working on the design of a ship and the right is what the fellow teammate sees as the other player makes changes to that shape. This seems to work 
inversely for both. And what this seems to be for is generating near real-time changes so that two teammates working together can get their own perspective on each part of the design of the ship itself. Now, one of the last things the devs start to cover here is the map building side of the game changes. More specifically, they mention that the world was updated with its layout in the newest open development build with 20 new islands, which brings the total number of islands in the world to 29. And with this, they provide a top-down view image showing all the islands within the game so far, as well as the respective names of those islands, all while intentionally making them unable to be visually made out, so as not to actually spoil anything. Now, I want to point out here, which I actually didn't even realize until today, was the ancient Saborian Vault, which was actually the island that I had made and had been working on, so I was ecstatic to find out the devs actually found it good enough to be put in the current build, but of course, I cannot share any of the specifics of the island itself. And nonetheless, on a more important note here, the devs give us an island creator showcase this week, namely an island called Shatter Peak by DJ Virus. And taking the writer's notes verbatim here, they say this is DJ Virus's second island for Lost Skies, and we were super impressed with the profile of the island. As you can see in the second image, the island has been sliced through in the middle, which gives it a really imposing and signature silhouette when approaching the island from certain directions. And I have to say personally, DJ, your island is actually absolutely stunning. It, it blew me away and honestly had me completely fooled that it was made by a community member and not an actual like paid artist of some kind because this island has so many hidden secrets within that i was genuinely flat out stunned so congrats on getting featured in the showcase my friend before we wrap up here this is a small announcement for the skywatch updates as a whole and as of now the devs have stated that development has reached a stage where they simply have less things to share to the community without spoiling the many different features that they actually have yet to reveal so as of now, they are switching to monthly update posts. So to this, they state there is still a ton of cool stuff coming soon. And while this is pretty unfortunate to hear, logically, it makes sense. At a certain point, they're going to start getting low on brand new things to share, as even when they share different concepts and implementations, the undertaking to actually flushing out the functions for these actual assets and new additions are what will take up most of your time. So likely they're getting to a point where they need to focus more on buffing out the additional content and gameplay loops that they've actually made to make sure that it's overall just more clean and not buggy. But on a more positive note, the last thing the dead have shared with us is that they have a ton of exciting content to share in the near future, but more specifically, the long-awaited gameplay reveal trailer, which they are excited to share more about soon. Now in terms of time frame here, I do want to apologize, this video is coming out over a week since the actual Skywatch came out. I had a bunch of group projects, assignments, and exams this past week for my aerospace classes, so finding time for this was quite difficult for me, but at the very least, from this point on, you can expect the next one probably to come out around March 16th, or maybe a little bit after, assuming the devs continue with this monthly update increment, but either way, I hope you guys have enjoyed the Skywatch updates thus far, and make sure to stay healthy, stay well, and like always, have a beautiful rest of your day, boys. Peace.